Now, here's Mr. Midnight, Jack Darrow. Evening, Night Owls, and thank you for allowing me into your living rooms once again. You're about to see. You okay, Jack? It's <laughs> profoundly disturbing. And shocking. We have a brand new found footage horror film in theaters now and streaming on Shudder on April 19th called Late Night with the Devil, which opened to incredible reviews at its premiere at South by Southwest last year, but unfortunately, this film has found itself in some controversy. So is this film any good? Should you check it out? What are my thoughts about the AI situation? Should you avoid this film at all costs? We'll be discussing that and much more in today's spoiler-free review. But first, let's get the conversation going in the comments below. Are you planning on seeing this film? Or, as we'll discuss in this video, has the AI-generated images taken away your excitement? Now, for those that have seen it, regardless of their knowledge of the situation or not, what did you all think about the film? What worked? What didn't work? Let's have some fun and respectful conversations in the comments below. So, I will be leaving time codes in the description of this video, so you can skip ahead to my review, but I want to talk about this AI-generated image with this film. You might know about it you might not care about it or you never even heard about it we're about to discuss it i'm gonna give you all the details and let you all know what i think about it so on march 19th a letterbox review from a user wrote that because of the use of ai they said i can't enjoy the amazing performances and clever ending that comment blew up online and triggered a ton of low ratings on letterbox as well as a discussion that followed on x now since then the directors have come out and addressed this and confirmed that ai was indeed used in the film filmmaking process. Now, the Australian siblings who wrote and directed the film released the following statement to Variety to clarify the scope of AI art in the movie. In conjunction with our amazing graphics and production design team, all of whom worked tirelessly to give this film the 70s aesthetic we always imagine, we experimented with AI for three still images which were edited further and ultimately appear as a very brief interstitials in the film. We feel incredibly fortunate to have such a talented and passionate cast, crew, and producing team go above and beyond to help bring this film to life. So now that you're caught up to speed, here are my thoughts. First and foremost, the use of AI isn't just limited to film and television, but has made its way across many other areas of business fields, and like it or not, it's here to stay. Now my position as it pertains to the film and television industry, I think is extremely complex and a very complicated subject matter, one that I completely understand in sensitivity because I personally know visual artists who have lost their jobs jobs because industries have used AI as a way to cut corners or to save money. So I completely get the anger and frustration and disappointment for those online. Now, yes, I knew about the AI situation before watching this movie. And yes, I was very disappointed to hear that AI was a part of the creative process of this film, but I still decided to watch it because number one, I'm a film critic and I love talking about movies and shows with you all, but I also like having these type of discussions about the filmmaking process. And after doing some research and even watching a clip from the start of this film, I'm talking about this very subject matter. Yeah, it was a couple of years ago, and it's as you know, I remember you know looking at them, and they were they they had such an awesome. What, the only thing that makes me sad is that we had such an awesome graphics design team and all these artists that were working on making this film so perfect. So it it makes me sad that that's a story that's I know. that's getting the attention. But I get it. I mean, I'm absolutely in a place right now where uh, that is something that we've learned so much about in the last few years since we made this movie, and that. Um, you know, I don't I don't want near the the creative process, but I totally stand by the brothers. I was there with them as a couple of years ago and they were um, this is brand new stuff. And like, oh, look, this cool thing generated an image and now our artists are doing a thing with it. So I think they said it really well. And I stand by what they said. And I completely stand by this movie as a thoroughly original piece of work that um, that so many man hours went into this incredible artistic craftsmanship of building this set, building this world. So, you know, it's yeah. a good conversation to have though. It's important conversation. We got to have it. So while yes, it might be a bit odd that they decided to use an AI generated technology that they were experimenting with versus just using what they created. It is an odd decision, but it is a decision they made. A decision that I think, you know, now hindsight 2020, when they make another movie, they're probably going to do, all right, no, no AI this time around. But as it again, as it pertains to the AI of it all, it's not going anywhere. But I feel it can be used as a tool or a resource and not just a way 
need to not bring in humans to work on films and television. They can bring these things to life way better than AI can. Now, last point I want to make about this AI discussion as it pertains to this film. I don't blame people for not seeing this movie because of their position or opinion on not supporting something that uses AI, even if it is just three images. But I think there are people that have taken it a bit overboard, and more in particular, they're bullying others into not seeing or calling them out for enjoying this movie. As I've always loved supporting independent films, and outside of a crime committed or inappropriate behavior or remarks, I can't personally tell someone to boycott a film so love this film or not i think you should all do your own research and determine if you want to see this or not versus feeling pressured any which way so that's my thoughts and opinion on the AI situation. I would love to hear yours in the comments below. But with that out of the way, let's actually talk about this movie. And for those who are like, what the hell is this movie? What is it all about? Let's talk about it. Jack Delroy is a host of a fictional 1970s variety and late night talk show titled Night Isles with Jack Delroy. Now, Jack's ratings need a boost. So on Halloween 1977, Jack decides to interview a woman who studies psychic phenomenons. And the subject of her recent book includes a young teenager who was the sole survival of a satanic church mass suicide and also has a clairvoyant and spectic on to prove if it's real or fake all while live on national television. So this was my first time watching the sibling director's work and I was very impressed by their ability to balance the tone of this 70s somewhat campy approach but still managing to create a genuine tense film moments of horror and suspense. They did a really great job of directing this film and bringing something fresh and unique to the genre in which I love. And since they're also credited as the writers, I also enjoyed how they wrote in the idea of what people would be willing to do to come up on top. Who would they be willing to sacrifice? That was something that was handled pretty well in this movie. Also great job on the cinematography and recreating the very 1970s look of the film and the production designs, the hair and makeup was incredible and really set the mood and the tone and made you feel like you were generally watching this on television during this time and era. And also the use of the found footage to me was very effective. It wasn't just used as a gimmick. Now I found the performances to be entertaining and very believable. From our non-believer Carmichael who was great, Dr. Drew was fantastic, and Jack's secondhand man Gus was perfect. But of all the supporting characters, I really thought the young girl who played Lily was incredible. She was so weird and eerie and creepy and when she was possessed, now if it was real or fake you'll have to see the film, but it was very believable. She was fantastic. Fantastic. Like I really thought that this girl was like had some screws loose in her head like that young lady did a really great job But the MVP of this movie is one of the best character actors working in the business and finally gets his time to lead a film I'm talking about the one and only David Desmalchian he plays a late night host so well. He's got the charm. He's got the charisma, the perfect comedic timing, but still manages to add these very interesting layers to his character as the film unfolds and we learn more about his past. David just completely owns his role and I really hope Hollywood takes notice and gives him more opportunities to lead more movies. Now, as a lifelong horror fan, I thought the psychological aspects of believing in the spirits and conjuring demons in this setting was really handled well. There are some very effective moments that can get under your skin and great use of practical effects and really some gruesome moments throughout this movie. I really thought the film was really well paced with its 90 minute runtime and really builds on the atmosphere with each new segment before the commercial breaks. It gets creepier and creepier as the film moves along and it all builds to this very shocking ending which I'll talk about a little bit later without spoiling anything but with all that being said the film is not perfect. There are some things that kept this from being a complete home run for me for a new original horror movie. As I mentioned on my last point of the ending without getting to the spoilers, I thought the film really took a swing to the fences, but I thought it would have been more effective if it leaned more towards the ambiguous nature of the supernatural versus how things actually unfold. Now while I found the ending to be entertaining, it was unhinged, it was unsettling, it caught you off guard, I wouldn't say it completely stuck the landing for me. Now this next point's a little bit of a nitpick. Now if you know me, you know I appreciate a good score and a really good soundtrack. And I feel like this film was missing that. Like missing a really good score or a soundtrack to kind of really bring in that time period. Again, I know it's a indie film so they probably couldn't get rights to certain music. But I, And also I realized that the film is like it's from the perspective of if you're in the audience or if you're watching this on TV. So it's trying to create that you're there versus like making you feel like you're watching a movie. But again, I feel like it missed that element of 
of just like having something that can really create those tense moments to have like a creepy ominous score so again just a small little nitpick but my last point i want to mention as far as my negatives i do wish the script had more nuances to a story based on belief and touch more on the satanic cults during that time there's a very famous location that plays a big part in the story that i wish had more details and was more fleshed out and selfishly i wish that we had more scenes between jack june and lily especially after we get in certain reveal now while i did love the studio setting and making you feel like you're watching this on television i do wish there were maybe one or two more locations to really explore those things i previously mentioned so those are my pros and my cons before i give you all my overall score and let you know if this film is worth checking out i want to take the time to thank you all for making it to this point in the video if you enjoyed the video so far do me a favor hit the thumbs up consider sharing this video but also sharing your thoughts on this film in the comments below and consider sticking around by subscribing to the channel overall i do think the the conversation of AI is very important and should be discussed, but I also think it's unfortunate that it's taken away from what I consider to be a very solid original horror film. The movie has great production design with great use of practicality and some really great performances. And even though I wasn't completely sold on the ending and wish there was more depth to the story, I thoroughly enjoyed myself and I'm giving Late Night with the Devil a solid 3.8 out of 5. Again, make your own decision to see this film or not based on your opinion, regardless of my review or other opinions online. This movie is available in theaters now and also available to watch on Shudder on April 19th. I saw this at home. I didn't see that theater but i think this would be a cool movie to see with a group of people in theaters but again if you're watching dune for the 19th time or watching ghostbusters or other movies that are currently in theater i would say definitely watch this when it is on shutter on april 19th so that's my thoughts on this film again 3.8 out of 5 i want to take this time again to thank you all for watching this video again like share your thoughts on this film the ai situation what did you like what didn't you like in the comments below consider sticking around to the channel by subscribing and hitting that notification bell you all are awesome stay safe and i'll catch you all on the next video